In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use shadow box to create a complex mechanical object. In this case, we're going to be making a gun model. And this gun is based on a design by a good friend of mine from Weta Workshop named Christian Pierce. And I just want to take a moment to thank him for designing this weapon. Weapon design is not my forte. Uh, it's something that Christian is exceptionally good at, as you'll see from his design. So we're indebted to him for drawing this up for us to use in this tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to do is get our reference image actually onto our shadow box. So the shadow box is accessed by going into the light box here. Go to the tool menu, and you'll find there's actually a variety of shadow boxes listed here. If I scroll over, you see there's shadow box 128, 256, 512, and then 64. And this represents the resolution. These are just resolutions that are automatically set on the shadow box. The best choice, I think, for our purpose would probably be about shadow box 128. Uh, we'll give it a test go and see if it gives us enough sharpness to actually get the type of detail that we want in our lowest resolution. And we'll subdivide up and start sculpting and, and beveling edges in as we go on. The trick here is we want our lowest resolution not to be so so low that we can't really get the fidelity that we want. We don't want it so high that it's difficult for us to work with using the polish and the trim normal brushes and the trim dynamic brushes. We want the ability to start adding subdivision levels so we can have some of that multi-resolution editing ability that we're used to in ZBrush. So I'll begin by selecting Shadowbox 128 and that loads it into the tool menu here. So I'll draw this on the canvas, go into edit mode. If we go to the subtool menu, you see there is our shadow box. Now the way shadow box functions, I'm going to change the material here so we get a better look. I'm going to go to the basic material, and I'll go to the material modifiers here, and I'm going to turn di diffuse all the way up. And I'll turn on perspective so you can get a clear look at the shape. It's three walls. There's a back, right and bottom. And the way shadow box works is if I hold down the control key, I'm going to turn off perspective and start drawing a mask. When I let go, that mask is going to create a 3D object. So I've defined the shape from the right hand view and if I turn on transparency, I'll be able to see through it to my mask. So if I go to the back view now, let's say I want to define the shape here. I've defined the side profile. So let's say I want there to be a kind of a wave in this shape, and I don't want it to be so thick. There you can see I've got that shape from the right, and I've got the wavy shape from the back. Now if I go to the top view, let's say I want to add a curve to this. Now if I do an arc like this, you'll see that it's going to severely limit the shape because I've got a, def a defined form here from the, si from the back and the right view. So let's say I just want to carve a bit of negative space out from the top. I'm just going to draw a big mask here so I get that whole form so it's not going to change anything. But if I carve away at my mask now I can carve a little negative space out of the back there. There you can see. Now when I exit out of Shadow Box by pressing the Shadow Box button here under the, the Subtool menu, I get a 3D object. And you can see we get a pretty nice resolution on there. If I go into Frame Mode, you can see the effect that it gives us. And you can see that it tries to polygroup based on um, on the view and on the plane change. Sometimes those polygroups will be useful and sometimes they won't. But that's a general look at shadow box. So let's go ahead and try this again. I'm going to go back to the light box. I'll grab shadow box 128. Turn off frame mode. And again, if I just go in here and I just start drawing a shape it'll create a 3D model based on the shape that I draw. And I'm just using Control alt to subtract from the mask. You can see how this type of form would be extremely difficult to, um, to model this quickly under any other program. So if we exit out of Shadowbox now, 
I mean, that's that's an extremely complex form there that would be pretty tricky to create. There's no way we could have created that in another program at this speed. And I can go ahead and control D to add a subdivision level now. And let's say if I go to my brush menu and I go to, uh, oops, go to my brush menu, go to the trim dynamic, there we go, trim dynamic, I can come in here and I can start polishing this back, start trimming some of these edges. And you can see that we get a little bit of softness in those hard edges there, and that's just a result of the um, of the uh, uh, the resolution of the shadow box. So let's take a look really quick. If I go to the light box now and I select a higher resolution shadow box, that was 128. Let's look at shadow box 256. Let's draw another bit of geometry here. If I control alt click on my mask it will sharpen the mask. Now if I exit out of shadow box you'll see I actually get a sharper bit of geometry here just because it's a higher resolution. If I go into frame mode you can see that's considerably more dense than the shadow box 128. Now it's going to be more difficult for us to add subdivision levels and work this because it's already pretty dense. You know you want to you want to be careful the, the higher up in subdivision levels you get on these shadow box objects because you will limit yourself to how much freedom you have with some of the tools if you're not able to add subdivision levels. Now, a bit of it will depend on your preference on, on how you like to work with the brushes. Some of the brushes you may not need to add subdivision levels and you may be perfectly happy using them at a single dense subdivision level. It really does come down to a matter of personal preference but just be aware that uh, the higher you go in the um, in the shadow box resolution, the crisper your edges are going to be, but you won't be able to get as many, if any, subdivision levels out. I'm just smoothing that now, just to smooth back some of those that bit, those bits of noise there. Now. We've got sort of a general introduction there to Shadowbox. Let's take a look at how to set up our Shadowbox with our reference image. You'll notice that if I go back to my Shadowbox and load it in, there's this image plane on there. It reads out, it's got me a, a right, or it's got a, um, a right, a back, and a bottom image plane. If I go to the texture menu under the tool palette, there's that texture there. So if I click clone texture, go to my texture palette and export that, I'll just export that to the uh, user files. I'll go here, oops, and I've, ref I've exported this as shadowboxreference.psd. So here in Photoshop, I'll open up the shadowboxreference.psd and you'll be able to see in just a moment the unfolded reference views. There's the bottom view, back, and right. Now I'm also going to go in and open up my reference side view image from Christian. I've got it saved here as side view. There we go. I'm just going to select all with control A, control C to copy, and then just control V to paste this into this image file and I'll just drag this over to the right hand view and then scale it down so it fits. Just make sure that it's falling within those lines. Scale it down just a tiny little bit. There we go. So that works out well. I'll go ahead and save this now and I'll save it as gunrefsb.psd and now we'll pop back over to ZBrush and we'll load this texture reference back into the shadow box so we'll have our reference image of the gun right there ready to go. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here we are back in ZBrush. If I go to the texture menu 
go to import and I'll just go ahead and import in that image that we just created it's the gun ref SB and then under the texture map menu under the shadow box I've got the shadow box 256 selected which actually I don't think I want 256 I'm going to go back to the light box and make sure that I select light box shadow box 128 make sure that that's the one that I want I'm just going to check the resolution on that yeah that looks good so we'll go back to the light box and make sure that we select light box 128 and then under the texture map menu click the swatch and we'll just load up gun ref SB and if we rotate around to the right side there's the gun reference now we're going to be loading the light box in several times so to keep us from having to keep going over and over and, and duplicating the, our effort by make, you know, loading this texture on over and over again there's a couple things that I'm going to do. The first thing is I'm going to clone this this tool just by going up to the top of the menu and clicking clone. So that's clone the shadow box. And now for each object that I create, if I create the barrel terrible barrel but there we go so let's say I've created a part of the gun I can just click append and right there in the tool menu is another version of the shadow box it's all ready to go if I select it it's ready to go with the reference applied so I don't have to worry about continually going back and, and, and updating the texture on the light box and going through all the motions again I can just append it in each time I need it Now I'm going to clear out all these extra tools that I've got in the tool menu by clicking the R button here. That just resets it. And I don't need this bit of geometry, so I'm going to delete that. So here we have our first shadow box with our reference applied. I'm going to save this as a project by going to File, Save As. And we'll just go to the user file. Actually, I'll go to the shadow box folder. Create a Z Tools folder and I'll save this as gun01. 